Hello, welcome, it's Jennifer, glad you're here. Today is a just for fun video. I had a few different products that I really wanted to use and I thought I'd film the video and share it with you. I'll start with a close look at the new Tim Holtz Distress Color and I'll put that color into action. We'll also be making a bunch of easel shaped cards and other shaped card designs. I just have a lot of things that I wanted to create and I thought I'd bring you with me. First up, let's look at the newest color in the Distress line from Tim Holtz, and that is Lumberjack Plaid. Just in time for the holidays, it really is a perfect uh, Christmas red color. Now, all of the different Distress products are available in this new color. Let's look at what there is. First of all, of course, there's the traditional Distress Ink and Reanchor. This is actually what I'll be using in today's video. You also have the Distress Oxide Ink Pad and the Reanchor. If you like creating colorful, bold backgrounds and doing fun techniques, there's the Distress Spray Stain and Distress Oxide Spray. There's Distress Paint, Distress Glaze, which is kind of like a translucent embossing powder, and the pen. But let's look at the two inks, the traditional Distress Ink and the Oxide. First, this is th the traditional Distress Ink. You can see Lumberjack plaid there in the bottom. And I created swatches for other reds that are kind of close in comparison. So you can see how they match up. To me, I find the Lumberjack plaid to be a great Christmas red. It's a little more blue than the other reds that I already have in the Distress Ink line. And it really is just a great crimson. If you think about like a black and red plaid shirt or pajamas, it's that red, that uh, crimson red that's just beautiful. It works well with the lighter shades of red. And then if you want to darken it up, you can add some aged mahogany. So this is the traditional Distress Ink. Here is a comparison of the Distress Oxide inks. You can see that true red there with the Lumberjack plaid. It has a little bit more of a blue tone than the other colors. And again, it goes really well with any of the lighter reds, especially um, Festive Berries, I would say. And then with a darker aged mahogany. By the way, if you'd like to create your own ink swatches like I've done here, I have free downloads on my website. And we have updated them with these newest colors, and we actually have ink swatches for a lot of the ink brands out there. So they're all available for free. I'll put a link below. Let's put that ink to good use by doing some blending on this fun pop-up easel ornament card. For this card, I'll be using the Birch Press Ornament Pop-Up Easel Die Set. This has everything that you need to create one of these cards. And there are actually some other dies that coordinate with it, so you can change it up if you want, and I'll show you those later. If you want to learn more about easel cards in addition to this video, I'll link to two at the end of this video. One of those shows how to make your own easel cards without specialty dies. Now I'm going to be doing ink blending on my first two cards, and I have recently found that the Concord and Ninth white cardstock is amazing for ink blending. It is butter smooth and it blends beautifully. You'll see here as I apply different distress ink colors onto my cardstock that it goes on effortlessly. Even if you get kind of like a bold amount of color somewhere that normally you wouldn't be able to kind of blend out, this blends very nicely. Now oxide inks are by nature, I think, a little bit easier to blend, but I'm using traditional distress ink here and having no trouble at all blending quickly and easily on the smooth cardstock. So I've die cut these pieces from that Concord and Ninth cardstock and I'm applying Barn Door Distress Ink on the outside edges of all three of these pieces that will layer together. I then will apply Lumberjack Plaid towards the center. You can see even when I have that harsh amount of color where I put a lot down, I'm able to blend it on this cardstock. Now there are lots of smooth card stocks out there. I just recently discovered that this one works great and so I think I'll stick with it for a while. So I put Lumberjack kind of towards the center there, and then I'll put a little aged mahogany even more in the center of that. My aged mahogany needs reinking, and I can't find the reinker, but I was able to get a little bit of color out of that. That Lumberjack is just beautiful there, along with the barn door and the aged mahogany. 
I use three kind of red distress inks here, one that's light, one that's medium, and then one that's dark. You could just use the Lumberjack and put the ink heavy in the center and then kind of fade to a light application on the outside edge. It's totally up to you. I had the three ink colors, so I thought I'd use them. But if you have less colors of ink, try just doing heavier amount in the center and lighter towards the edge. All right, so now I've also die cut additional pieces from scrap white cardstock, and I'm gluing them behind our inked pieces. This is just to give a layered look. Also, all of my top layer are inked in the same way. So to make those layers stand out, I have that additional white cardstock behind it, and it kind of creates what looks like a white halo around the edge. You'll see that when I'm done, but it really makes this ink blended ornament stand out and makes all of those layers pop out. You could do each of the layers in a different color, but I thought it'd be fun to do the same ink blending on each and just add that dimension to really make it more obvious that you have lots of detail to this ornament. I'm gluing my layers together with Gina K Connect liquid adhesive that I've put in a fine tip bottle. Love this stuff. And I like to put something heavy on it while it dries. I'm using a paperweight here, I'll link to it below, but anything heavy is very helpful when you're assembling a lot of pieces because that way you can be sure that the uh, adhesive really connects and that your piece will be glued together nicely. All right, so now you can see I have the layers all ink blended the same way, but they stand out thanks to the extra white cardstock we put behind it and that little white halo that shows around the outside edge. I'll glue this layered piece onto that solid white ornament die cut. I created that with one of the dies in that easel pop-up die set. This is kind of the foundation that will assemble our ornament on. I'm putting a foam adhesive circle right there at the top of the ornament, and that is where I can rest my ornament topper. I also put some liquid adhesive up there just to make sure it stays put. I cut this from a matte gold cardstock. It's kind of like a champagne color. I'll link to that below. It's from Memory Box. And then right at the center of that, I'll add a bow that I die cut from red glitter cardstock from Memory Box. And that bow die is included in the easel die set also. I'll put something heavy on that while that dries. I'm also adding some red gemstones. So a lot of red going on here, but it really looks cool in real life because there's dimension and shine. These are from Pink Fresh Studio. They're actually gems with glitter inside and they have lots of different colors. I thought this red looked great on the red ornament. So now it has some additional sparkle. I also need to add a sentiment to the front. I have my Misty stamping tool and I'm putting my ornament inside along with a sentiment from the My Favorite Things Maud and Mary stamp set. Now I probably should have done the sentiment heat embossing earlier, but I completely forgot. So I'm doing it now. I'm using anti-static powder tool and stamping the sentiment with Versamark ink. And then I will add gold embossing powder. After I heat set that, I have a nice shiny gold sentiment at the center of our ornament. I cut the ornament easel die from heavyweight white cardstock and I'm folding along that center line and reinforcing it with my bone folder. Then I'm folding this little flap up and reinforcing that with my bone folder. I will put liquid adhesive right along that flap and then lay our assembled ornament piece right on top, kind of centering it on that. This will form the pop-up easel that really stands nicely on display. I wanted to mention there are two little dies included in that die set. You can see it here over to the right. Those are meant to die cut and put inside of the card right where my finger is. That way you can have something that you prop the easel up against. It would be a little die cut there that you can kind of prop the bottom of the ornament against to have it on display. But I decided to skip that for today's card. I feel like it can stand enough up on its own, but you have that option if you want to. Now here's a look at the completed ornament. It does fit into an A2 envelope nicely. I used a red metallic one from Simon Says Stamp. There you can see that blending. I went pretty subtle with the blending. You could go more intense if you want, which we'll do in my next example. But you can see that lumberjack plaid is great for Christmas red. So I really like this ornament easel design and so I thought I'd make a couple more and this next one also uses that lumberjack plaid color but with a different more bold blend. I'm also changing up the design on the front of the ornament. 
So this is the Birch Press Designs Meridian Ornament Die Set. You can see the three layering dies over there on the left. And these are sized to work along with that ornament easel die set. So you could use either style ornament on the easel card or use the ornament separate on a regular flat card. Now the blend I chose to do this time is to cover the entire ornament with the lumberjack plaid and then put some seedless preserves towards the center and a tiny bit of villainous potion at the center of that. So this gives me a red to purple blend that really is beautiful. It kind of gives a plum color there in the center. And I think it's just a fun uh, way to create something a little bit different with red. And then I used gold glitter cardstock for the top layer of this layered ornament. And that gold goes really well with that red and purple blend. I wanted a lot of dimension on this, so I cut additional die cuts from white scrap cardstock, and I'm gluing them behind our inked and glittered cardstock die cuts so that I have that dimension and also that white halo around the outside edge, which allows the dimension to stand out even more. You can see that there. So we have a fun blend with the gold glitter on top and lots of dimension and detail. I then glued this onto the solid white ornament die cut that comes in the easel die set. This time I thought it'd be fun to make this ornament removable from the easel card. So the way I went about doing that is die cutting the little ornament topper and gluing that on top of our ornament. Last time I glued this all together on that solid white die cut that you see on the left. This time I'm gluing it together separately. Then I'm putting a small foam circle right there at the top back of that ornament topper. I had to cut it in half and put part of the foam circle on one side and part on the other, just because it's such a small space. Then I have a, another ornament topper die cut. This one's from white cardstock, and I'm putting that on the back. I chose to leave the back plain white so I can write Meguiar's 2022 on the back. All right, so now I am taking this ornament and just holding it on the front of this white die cut, the solid white die cut, and I'm poking a hole right through the top loop of the ornament. So you can see there's a hole on that white shadow die cut. I'm taking some metallic thread. This happens to be from Altenew, but you could use any kind of thread that you want. I created a loop and I'm feeding it through the top of our ornament. And then I will take the ends of the thread and feed that through the loop. And that just creates kind of a knot at the top. Then I will tie the ends together to create another knot that's about two or three inches away. So basically we have a loop of thread up there that the recipient could hang on their Christmas tree. So I'll trim off the excess. So I'm going to take the end of this string and push it through that tiny little hole that we created on that white shadow die cut. I used a piercing tool just to kind of push it through. And then I will feed that thread through until the ornament is tight on the front. So it's tight there. I'm not gluing the ornament to the front, just holding it there. Now on that string on the back or the thread, I'm putting some temporary tape. I chose to use temporary tape so that I can tell the recipient that they can remove that tape and then put the ornament on their tree. Since my loop of thread is pretty long here, I thought I'd fold it back and put another piece of tape just to hold it out of the way as we assemble our easel card. Remember that tape is the only thing holding that ornament to the front of this card. Now I have my easel card that I created like I showed you earlier, putting liquid adhesive on that front flap and then placing the back of our ornament shadow die cut right up against it. So now we have the easel card glued together and the ornament is just hanging on the front. Off screen, I created a bow using the same ink blended colors and I'm gluing that right to the top of the ornament, but making sure that it doesn't hinder that this ornament hang is hanging there on the front. So there you can see the tape on the back. I chose to use blue, so it was obvious, but you could use scotch tape or whatever you want. And you can see that ornament swings free because the only thing holding it onto the easel card is that string that's tucked through the hole and taped to the back. I love the, the color blend on this one. That red and purple that we created with the Lumberjack Distress Ink is just beautiful in real life and great for the holidays. And we added some little gold glitter gems from Pink Fresh Studio to the center of the pattern. 
I like how this stands up like an easel for display very nicely. If you want to hide your sentiment on the inside, you could die cut an additional solid white ornament and just create a little flap on the inside that flips open to show your hidden greeting. Totally up to you. I decided to leave mine as is. While I had my supplies out, I created a third easel card. This time, I just used some scraps I had sitting on my desk. I didn't do any ink blending. I just used colored cardstock and silver glitter cardstock. It's pretty quick to pull this card together once you've done one or two of them. By the way, I assembled this ornament easel card like the first one, where the ornament is glued to the card so it'll stay on there. So if you wanted to, you could have done it like the last one where the ornament is removable. By the way, if you're looking for other ideas of cards that have removable ornaments to keep as keepsakes, I'll put a link up here on the top right and you can check out a video showing that. Okay, now it's time for some birthday cards. I have two cake easel card designs. You could do this for other celebrations too, be great for a wedding or anniversary, but I needed some birthday cards, so I thought I'd start there. I'm using the Poppy Stamps Floral Cake Pop-Up Easel Die Set. I've actually used this a lot off screen and thought it was time to share it on screen as I made these two cards that I needed to have today. Now this die set has everything you need to create the easel card and it also has lots of flowers and leaves that you could use on non-easel cards too. Now this easel die is huge. It's bigger than my cutting plates. That's okay. All I do is I run it through in two parts. So first I'm cutting the top portion or most of this easel die. And you'll see on the bottom, some of the die is hanging out from my cutting plates. That's okay. I will then switch it and make it so that that portion is between the plates and I run it through again. That way with two passes, I can cut out this large easel cake die cut. I'll set that aside and now let's assemble the cake that we'll put onto that easel die cut. This cake has two layers. I die cut the bottom larger layer from pink cardstock and I'm taking the die for the smaller second layer and taping it right at the top center. I'm doing this so that I'll have a little notch at the top of my bottom layer where I can glue the top layer die cuts. The reason I did that is if I just glued the top layer right on top of the bottom layer, the top layer of the cake would stick out more and it kind of looked a little funny. So by doing that notch, I get a smoother, more realistic look. So I'm gluing the bottom pink layers onto the base of the cake and then I can glue the second layer of the cake right into that notch and it'll give a nice smooth look. I did choose to layer some die cuts for these pieces of the cake for dimension, but by all means you could skip that if you want. I used the icing die cuts th uh, that's included in the set to cut from a slightly darker pink cardstock and I'm gluing these on both layers of the cake. By the way, I think there are coordinating dies available separately that do more of a full coverage kind of um, icing that's dripping down if you want to check that out. But I'm just sticking with what came in this particular die set for the cards I'm doing today. The white die cut base of this is a little bit taller, so if you wanted some support for candles or other things, you can have it. But I decided to cut that off just to give it a more defined look, but you could leave it there if you wanted to. I also created some candles. These dies are included in that easel die set. I cut them from white cardstock and a plum cardstock. From the plum cardstock die cuts, I'm cutting off the wick and the flame, and I'm gluing that onto the solid white die cuts. That way, the candle itself is a plum color, and the wick and the flame is still white. We'll add some yellow and orange marker to the flame later on. By layering these die cuts, I'm also making the uh, candles stronger so that they will stick up from the top of our card and be nice and strong. So I actually needed two birthday cards today. So I'm creating two easel birthday cake cards at the same time. This is the other one. I wanted to show you how I created those candles at the top. I needed a 17th birthday card. So I'm using the My Favorite Things Pumped Up Number Dies. These are actually meant for being number balloons, but I'm cutting the little knot off the bottom so I can turn them into candles. Any number dies would work. 
I have a white candle die cut and I'm cutting off the top and I'm gluing it between two number seven die cuts. That way when it's assembled, it's a seven with a little flame, wick and flame sticking off the top. So this is just one way that I kind of looked at my products and how to repurpose them to create something new. So instead of number balloons, I have a number candle. And I'll do the same thing for the one. I created a cake like I did before, but this time with cream colored cardstock and yellow. I'm gluing my candles on the top. I also off screen die cut a bunch of stars of different sizes from different scraps of cardstock using an old discontinued die set, but any stars would work. And I also used the Simon Says Stamp Mini Stars Party Die that's at the top of the screen there to cut a bunch of small gold glitter stars. Now off screen, I arranged the stars on this cake and the flowers on my pink cake. Those flowers are included in the birthday cake easel die set. So I just used what was there and I was able to create fun little clusters of flowers. On both cards, I used a sentiment from this Mama Elephant stamp set, and I love that I was able to create two different looking cakes using the same cake easel card die set, and then I added some other dies onto the one on the right just to change it up. So this is one of those sets that I think will be fun to use with other products I already have. All right, so now it's time to create the base for these cards, the easel base. So I fold along the center score line and I reinforce that. And then I fold that little flap back. The die does do the score lines for you so you know where to fold. I then will put liquid adhesive along that little flap and lay our assembled cake die cuts right onto it and put something heavy on it while it dries. Okay, once they're dry, let's take a look at the completed card. So this is the 17 one. You can put a glue die cut on the inside to prop the easel against on display, but I decided to leave it plain so that there's plenty of room to write a personal sentiment. Here you can see how the easel card kind of comes together. And at a closer look, you can see all the different stars. You can see I added some gold gemstones also. To the white die cut flame sticking out the top, I just used a yellow and orange marker to make it look a little more realistic. Another fun thing is I can use this cake easel card die set to create just a cake to go on a regular card front too in case I don't want an easel card. So I could use it in a few different ways. I could even do a small one layer cake or a large one layer cake. Here is the pink version. Now what's cool about this is that die set includes those flower dies and I can use those flowers on other types of cards too, a non cake card. I really like when die sets have multiple uses. I added some pink pearls to the icing there and yellow pearls to the center of the flowers. And there we have a uh, birthday card cake that is perfect for my daughter's friend. The other one's going to my son's friend. Okay, next up we have a snow globe shaped card. This is not an easel card. If you're looking for a snow globe easel card, I'll link to a video I did last year. I'll link to it up here on the top right. You can check that out. This is just a shaped card. But I had these leftover arranged die cuts from my last video, so I thought I'd put it to use with this die set. Now this is the Trinity Stamps Snow Globe Card Die Set. You can see it creates the shaped card itself and also different pieces that you can layer in different ways. It even has dies to create little reflections for the snow globe. Now I didn't use those, but they're available and I like that there's a lot of options. You could even use this for a shaker card, although I chose not to do that today. So I'm starting with the inside die cut of the snow globe and I cut this from the Concord and Ninth white cardstock that's very smooth. I'm applying Prize Winter Distress Ink. This needs re-inking so it's kind of going down light and a little splotchy, but I can layer up that color no problem. Here we have the chip sapphire and I'm adding more of that towards the bottom. So it kind of lightens towards the top. I'll then use the die that cuts little snow or stars so that there's openings on that. Very easy to do. Next up, we need to create a little snow bank for our houses to sit on. I cut that from the center of the snow globe using white glitter cardstock. Then there is this snow bank die that you can cut however you want. You can make your snow bank tall, make it low, you can make it kind of straighter across or a little hill. I created two that I'll glue together for a layered look. So it looks like it has two snow hills. 
Once again, I'm using my liquid adhesive to glue these pieces together. That way you can wiggle them until you're really happy with the placement and then leave it to dry and it'll dry very secure. I'll glue that on the back of our inked blue background. I also cut the outline of the snow globe from Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock, which is a light gray, just so it would stand out against the white. Here I have the base of the snow globe that I cut from brown cardstock, and then I added darker brown distress ink to the edge just for a bit of shading. It's easiest to do uh, ink blending like that if you start with a colored cardstock and just add a darker amount of ink on the outside edges. I cut the card base from heavyweight white cardstock, and I'm gluing all the pieces onto the front of that. Here I have the snow globe. That is cut three times from cardstock, so it's thick. And again, that's from a light gray cardstock. I have the base glued along the bottom. We can pop our little sky and snowbank scene right into the opening. And then we have some little trees and little houses that I have left over from my last video. Again, I'll have it linked up here on the top right. These houses and trees are from the Honey Bee Winter Village die set, which I have declared one of my favorite die sets of the season. This and that Concord and Ninth Winter Wonderland that has the little nutcrackers, they're my two favorite. I'll link to that video up here also. But today I'm using these little house die cuts. I had leftover houses assembled already sitting on my desk, so I'm putting them to good use here. I'm gluing these right onto that inside scene there along with some extra little die cut trees. Here is another advantage of using a liquid adhesive is you can glue down your die cuts, but then lift it and tuck things under it. You have some time before it dries to move things around. And when you're creating a scene like that, that's really important. When you're done, you just put something heavy on it while it dries. Now you could leave this as is, but I decided to cut this little notch out here on the left hand side of my card base, just using some scissors. You could instead use clear acetate for that card base, or you could use vellum, and then you wouldn't have to do this, or you could just leave it as it was. But I thought this gave it a really nice clean look from the front, and it really didn't take that long to do. At this point, I opened up my card and realized I have a ink stain and a little spot from my stamp cleaner on the inside, and I'm not starting over. I'll show you how I fix that in a moment. But first, let's stamp a sentiment on the front. I'm putting Season's Greetings from that My Favorite Things Maud and Mary stamp set that I showed you earlier, right along the bottom. I put it there straight, and then I'm gonna curve the edges of that stamp a little bit. Just move it with my fingers. Trying to get the stamp to curve at the same curve as the base of my card. And it's pretty easy to do. You can see it has a little curve there to it now. I will use my anti-static powder tool and then stamp the sentiment with Versamark ink and add white embossing powder and heat set it. Now I could have done this earlier before I assembled everything, but honestly, I had no idea where I was gonna put the sentiment, so I just waited till the end. The completed card stands up nicely on display and fits well into a regular A2 envelope. To cover up those little marks on the inside, I just die cut two large white cut, uh, circles and glued them on the inside. I don't think anyone will ever wonder why I did that, but it was really to hide those mistakes. I did add some itty bitty stars to the sky that are iridescent just for a bit of shine. All of those trees and the little die cuts on the houses are in that Honey Bee Winter Village die set. You can also see the white glitter cardstock that I used for the snow. So you could create any scene that you want to inside of this card. In fact, the die set that creates the snow globe includes a house and trees. I just had these completed, so I wanted to put them to use, and I thought I'd film it to share with you. Now, I also wanted to show you some cards I have in the making. I uh, die cut this summer, a long time ago, a bunch of rainbow die cuts using a Honey Bee die set. Well, I finally started putting the rainbows together when I was at a crafting retreat a couple weekends ago. You can see how many rainbows I've already started to assemble. I'm now just adding the clouds and the sun, and I still have to add a sentiment and some sort of sparkle to it. But I thought I'd share with you all of these right now. If you're looking for happy cards to make, this is a really fun one. The die set includes the die that creates the card base, so this little rainbow that opens up. It also includes the sun, the clouds, and the die to cut all the different arches of the rainbow. 
So things like this I find really fun because they're unexpected. They're different. If you wanted to, you could just cut this so it's a rainbow that you glue on the front of a regular card. So many things you can do with them. Now I plan to add a sentiment from this Honey Bee Stamps Look Forward to Rainbows stamp set because it has coordinating dies that are really easy to cut out those sentiments and add them anywhere you want on the card. So what I like to do is do a bunch of die cutting and then do a bunch of gluing and then assemble everything together. I just thought I'd show you this just to show you I really do make a lot of these cards off on my own. Hopefully I'll finish these up soon. Lila and I wanted to send these to kids at the St. Jude's Hospital. So I'm thinking maybe over the holidays we'll finish them and get them in the mail. I just think these are a fun way to brighten up anyone's day. And those shaped cards, you never can go wrong. All right, I hope you had fun just watching me create with some products I've wanted to use with a new ink color and using up some little extras I had sitting around in my room. So if you're interested in what I use, I do have it linked below in my YouTube description. At the end, I'll link to a couple other easel card design videos. I thank you for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you soon.